Hi there, this is Eric for Otoy. In this video, we're going to start taking a look at working with environment lighting uh, in Octane for Maya. And I'm using the Space Gas Station 01 scene for this demonstration. And it's a simple scene that has some spaceships that are refueling and some structures as well as our happy little robot here. I'm going to go into the renderer and switch to Octane Render. And when I do that, we're going to see that the scene is very dark and is only being lit by the lights on the machinery here and the robots and the ground lights. So we don't have any environmental lighting uh, yet. The first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to turn off this gamma correction or this color correction uh, option here in the viewport so that it's not interfering with what we see in the octane scene. So always remember to do that when working the viewport. So turn that off and I'm going to go into the render settings here and in the Octane Render tab, under Render Settings, I want to find the Environment option, and I'm going to choose Create New to add a new environment. So by default, the environment that is created is a texture environment. You can see the settings here opened up here in the Attribute Editor. Anytime you need to access these settings, you could just go into the Render Settings and click on this little arrow next to the environment, and that will open up the settings here. So right now we have a texture environment, and it's a flat white texture. If I expand the texture environment settings, this value of 1 is white. If I bring this down, it gets dimmer until it's all the way to black. We'll talk about the texture environment in another video. In this video, I want to talk about the daylight environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the type here from texture environment to daylight environment. And then I'm going to collapse the texture environment settings since we don't need them. Now under Daylight Environment, we have two options. We have Sun Direction and Daylight System. In this video, let's talk about Sun Direction. And within Sun Direction, the, the settings that we'll be talking about are right here above the Daylight System, so in this area. And there are two versions of the Sun Direction Daylight System. There's the new model, which is John by default, and the older model, which is uh, not quite as nice looking as the newer model. So we're going to stick with the newer model here. This option is mostly there for backwards com compatibility. I'm going to switch to uh, camera two so that we can see the shadows on the ground. And I want to adjust the turbidity. So the turbidity is the amount of haze in the scene. And the most obvious difference you'll see as I start to raise this value is that by adding haze in the atmosphere, the shadows are going to get uh, less distinct and a little bit softer until they kind of just blur away completely. So if I switch back to uh, camera one, you can see that it's just the lighting on the ground is not quite as uh, high contrast as it was before since there's kind of a haze in the atmosphere. Now we don't actually see the haze here, that's achieved through different means, but it's mostly just controlling the shadows and the brightness of the light. So if I bring this back down to the lowest value of 2, you can see that the shadows are now uh, high contrast. I'll switch to camera 2 so you can see it's kind of a very clear day. The power setting is the overall amount of energy that is put out by the daylight system. So if I raise this to 2, you can see it starts to get much brighter. 5, it's even brighter still. And if I set this, say, to 0.5, we get a kind of a dim light. So you can adjust that as needed. The north offset allows us to kind of change the position of the sun, but we're not going to see a whole lot of uh, change right now because we're kind of looking at a noonday lighting scenario. So the sun is coming from straight above. So let's skip this stuff for just a second and go down to the sun direction settings. So this is where you control the direction of the sunlight. So if I set this to, say, 0.5, you can see that the shadows shift. And let's switch to uh, camera 1 here so that we can see the effect in the, in the sky. So as I adjust these values, we're going to see that we're kind of changing the position of the sun in the sky, and we get different, uh, different effects that way. And it's kind of something you can experiment with in order to design the overall look of your sunlight. So I'm just kind of adjusting these values and seeing what happens when I do that. So let's set this to 0.1 and set this to 0.1. And I'm just kind of sort of messing around here with different settings. So we can see now we can see the sunlight in the sky. 
So let's see if we can bring that down a little bit. That's way down, so we have a nice sunset here. So let's try 0.08. And I'm going to select my robot friend here and move him out of the way. So you can see the sun right there. I'm going to rotate him so he's facing the camera. You don't have to do this, but it kind of makes it feels like he's more of a helpful robot that way. So now that we can see the sun, we can do things like we can adjust the sun size in the scene. So we're on a distant planet that's closer to the sun. You can see we have a nice giant sun that way. Or we can make it very small. We can also adjust, say, the north offset now should be a bit more obvious what it does. So it's kind of changing the position of the sun in the sky without necessarily changing the time of the day. We can also adjust the sky color. Let's say we wanted to make this more of an alien world. So uh, let's make the sky a bit more orangish. And same with sort of the ground haze. This is a planet that apparently is stuck in the 80s. So it's a little bit retro. That's cool. For the ground here, this refers to kind of an infinite plane. You can't see that right now because I have a ground uh, object in here. So I'm going to select this and press Control H to hide it. And let's switch to uh, camera two. And let's bring back our visible. Let's bring back our environment node. I'm going to set the ground color to bright green just to make it really obvious. And then as I start to change the ground blend angle and the ground start angle. You can sort of see that green haze coming in from below. So if I move out a little bit, you can see that green haze represents the ground. And you can see it's also reflected in the objects. So that's a way you can kind of adjust the reflections in the ground. If I bring back the uh, ground that I, the ground plane, I'll choose display show last hidden, bring back the ground. And you can see that it's going to be blocked by the ground here. So it's not going to do a whole lot for us in this case. So let's set this back to black. And that's basically the way that the ground works. So you can actually put an image if you want an image for the sky in the background. So I'll click on this checker box next to sky texture. And under create a uh, render node, I'll click on octane image texture. And I'm going to bring in this HGRI image. And choose open. And I'm going to adjust the gamma here, set it to a gamma of one so that we can see. Now this is kind of interesting because you can see there are sunlight right here represented by the sphere is still being controlled by the uh, sun sky node. It's just we have an image in the background changing the color of the sky. So that's one way you can use an image in the background for the sky. There's a few other methods that I'll show you as well. But that's essentially what the sky texture node does. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to right click and choose break connection so we can go back to our regular sky and get our camera angle back. Something like that. And the medium is going to add a visible haze in the scene. I'm going to devote a video to that since that's a larger topic. Uh, but that's essentially the settings when using sun direction. In the next video, we'll take a look at the daylight system.